If you want to make money blogging in 2023, I'm breaking it all down for you. So this video, it's going to be a little bit more advanced than others. So I'm covering the four main phases of monetization, some advanced tactics to combine multiple revenue streams, how to use AI in your strategy, and how to grow from zero or a few thousand dollars a month to $10,000 a month, $50,000 a month, and more. So let's get into it. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to monetize a blog. What are the different revenue streams? How do we make money and how do we tie them all together? And you know, there's really a lot of different ways that you can monetize a blog when you think about it, affiliate marketing, ads, courses, sponsorships, all this stuff. And there's the key to all this is to use multiple revenue streams and really know how they work together. So we're gonna cover every single one and how they work together. And we wanna tell you, you know, it is very possible to make $50,000 a month. And I'm gonna show you how with these different monetization strategies for your blog or your content business, your website. All you need really is a strategy so you need a good strategy, that's content, affiliate marketing, how to actually do this. You need multiple revenue streams and time because we'll go through different phases of monetization. So early phases, what makes sense when you're just starting versus compounding effects, you know, getting traffic, building a real brand for yourself and expanding. And basically where I went from 2019 to where I am now and the different phases and how to make the most money at every phase. So first phase one is affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing is ideal because you don't have any traffic yet. So if you wanna make money blogging and you don't really have any articles, you don't have traffic yet, you don't have an audience, you don't have any, you don't wanna, you can't sell a product to people if you don't have an audience yet. So affiliate marketing is selling other people's products and making commissions on every sale, which is ideal if you have no traffic. It teaches you how to find good keywords. So affiliate marketing is part of your content strategy. It, you know, we teach writing informational posts to get ad revenue. We write transactional best of posts to make affiliate revenue, but it teaches you how to find these good opportunities and it forces you to create content that matters. So we'll cover why affiliate marketing makes a lot more money than other revenue streams and how it does it. But it covers content planning, topical authority, info posts versus transactional posts and all of that. And then once you get momentum with this money starts to roll in. So when we think about it, each post is also kind of like its own mini business. So we're not monetizing you know, when we think about monetizing a blog in an advanced way, we're not talking about just blast ads on the entire blog. That's lazy and simple and not the best way to do it. But if we're using affiliate marketing and different strategies, we can te use each article ranking as its own mini business, add the affiliate links and companies in the right places and really look at it in a from a different lens. So every article begins with really good keyword research. So if we're talking about affiliate marketing, we wanna use the word best because it signifies buyer intent. When we think about somebody searching Google for best, any type of product, like this example here, best red light therapy devices, it's signifying that they are looking for a blog to compare and contrast and show you what the best possible devices are. So when we look at the keyword explorer here for best red light therapy devices, we, we can look at different metrics to understand how viable it is to rank for this stuff. So we can see the search volume is 300 a month for this specific term. The traffic potential is 2.6K per month, which means that there's other variations of this term that can help you get that much traffic. In the top ranking result shows here, global volume, how difficult it is, Keyword difficulty is a scale from zero to 100 based on the competition and you know link building and authority of the other sites. We can see the position history over the past two years. And we can see that there's some decent volatility here and it's changing a lot. And then we can view the top 10 ranking sites. So we wanna see, you know, you're looking for different metrics, you're looking for different things, but ultimately we wanna know what's the volume, what's the difficulty, what's the traffic potential and we'll go from there. And what's interesting, if I put in red light therapy by itself and then use the matching terms tool, I can see a bunch of different things. And this actually opens up and finds these good affiliate opportunities. And this works in any niche. You can put in best golf, best camping, best software, and it finds all of these related product category posts that you can write. So for example, best red light therapy for face, that might be a better one because the volume's higher, the traffic potential is higher, and it looks a little bit easier to rank for. So, you know, you wanna find these opportunities or best red light therapy at home, 11,000. That's a huge search volume there. So a lot more um, sites ranking. There's some low competition sites there. So you wanna use the matching terms tool to find these opportunities and create content for this affiliate marketing type of article. So the next part in affiliate marketing is actually creating the content. And we can see a number of different articles here, like Rolling Stone has the best red light therapy devices and why they work. We've got another one here from Make Use Of, the best red light therapy devices. And then another one here from uh, Mind Body Green about these tools. So this is kind of a competitive one. We can find different opportunities. We can see how they're laid out. So it's there's an H1 title that includes the target keyword that we found in Hrefs. There's an introduction, and then they list them all out. They talk about the benefits of therapy, how they picked it, and then they go over the picks. It's the same thing in any category. You'll just see slightly different like formatting and exactly what they do. But you can see that it typically starts with 
content and information. And I have a lot of videos on this, exactly how to write a perfect blog post, including the introduction, the, you know, how to lay out brands, how to organize and categorize brands, which order to put them in, how to use headings, how to use Surfer SEO and all of that stuff. But we see it's a pretty simple format by adding these brands and then putting affiliate links in. So we can see that this is an affiliate link. Uh, there's, that one might not have been an affiliate link. This is an Amazon affiliate link right here. And we can see the product costs $450 and they make a commission on every sale if someone buys through that. So we can see it's a pretty templatized and easy format. So we can even take a look at an example on my site of an article like the best website builders and it's laid out with target keywords in the title and in the introduction, the top five picks, and then a lot of different content laid out with an H2 heading, including what is the best plus the target keyword, and then a format uh, of H3s for the companies, and then just our take, our picks, and our different affiliate links. Now we wanna add affiliate links throughout the content multiple times, so potentially even in the title of the company in a little call to action button. Now this post, I've updated this thing many times over the years, so it never had this box at the beginning. You don't need something as fancy as that, but you can just have some content in here. We wanna cover features, the experience, the pricing of the product, what you like and dislike, human experience wins, and then an affiliate link here at the bottom as well. So people mainly buy via text-based affiliate links. Yes, there's banner affiliate links and all these different things, and you can blast people on social media, but again, it goes back to search intent. Blogs make the most money from affiliate marketing, and they make them for people searching for the product themselves and then clicking a text-based affiliate link you can have a call to action sentence here your button and then when someone clicks and buys you know through that link you make a commission on every sale now once you have traffic to some articles you've written them you've created content then you start joining the affiliate programs sometimes people join affiliate programs like right away before they're getting any traffic and it's just kind of wasting time because you can what you can do is write the article add normal links to all the companies work on it update it maybe build some links to it get it going make a lot of updates once it's ranking then you can join the affiliate programs and you start making a lot of money right away so for example, any you know affiliate program has a sign-up page, like this one is for the Red Light Therapy, Mito Red. They are paying 10% commission on each sale. And they have a 30-day cookie, so if they click your affiliate link, they don't purchase, but they come back within 30 days and purchase, you still get credit. And then you sign up with a form like this. So basically all you need is a website. Yes, you need a website typically. There's some cases where you don't, but you'd want a website and then try to get a domain name email address as well. So use something like Google Workspace to create a email address that matches your website. It looks a lot more you know, nice and you'll probably get approved more than just using a Gmail account. But you sign up for these, I'm currently in over 300 affiliate programs and I just have a number of different bookmarks that I use online. There's not like one central database for all this stuff. I use Thirsty Affiliates to uh, on WordPress to add all my links in and organize them all in one place. And basically a spreadsheet with all my content and information. And you just, I just check them, you know, maybe once a month. And even though there's, I'm in 300, there's like a handful, maybe the top 20, top 30 that make the most money. So it's a lot of, it's pretty simple and each affiliate the dashboard's a little bit different. Some are just one company, some are affiliate networks that uh, have multiple companies in there, but they all look a little bit different. There's no one size fits all approach, but all you have to do is sign up, get approved, which, you know, can you get approved with no traffic? Yes, it just depends. Every single affiliate manager is different. Every company is different. But again, it goes back to other things I teach in, you know, my masterclass, which is also linked below, but also in Blog Growth Engine, you need content, you need stuff to actually get traffic first and then add your affiliate links in. So that's kind of that in a nutshell. So let's run some numbers with affiliate marketing. The goal here is to create content for these best of roundup posts that can make you money and try to rank in the top five positions of Google. Yes, you can make money in the top 10, maybe nine or 10, depending on the search volume. You definitely can, but the goal would be to get into the top five potentially for a keyword. Now let's run some math. So if you've got 5,000 clicks to your article a month and 30% of people click on an affiliate link, that's 1,500 clicks. So for example, not everybody that visits your blog post is gonna click on one of those affiliate links, but I would assume that 30% would. It could be higher, sometimes it's 40 or 50%, it just depends on the niche. Now out of those 1500 people that click one of your affiliate links, 2% of them will probably purchase. So it's a low conversion rate, but that's typical. I don't wanna overestimate here for you. So that would equal 30 purchases. Now if the average order value is 500, like the red light therapy lights are, and that's 15,000 of revenue you generated for these red light therapy companies through your affiliate links, and you make 10% commission on that, that's $1,500 in commissions. And this is just from one article. So again, this is like, 
going back to every article is its own mini business. If you have one on red light therapy, like our examples, you would wanna make sure that you're making money from that number one position. What if number two started making more money in earnings per click? Maybe then you put it up. That's the unfortunate reality of the internet today is that most recommendations are based on who makes the most money, what companies are promoted. But really it works out because most popular brands and ones that are best have the highest conversion rates and are number one anyways. So that's just from one article as an example of running the numbers there. Now we start with affiliate marketing because of the earnings per visitor. So I'll cover how it's different than ad revenue, but we make we can make a lot more money for every visitor when there's actually somebody searching a high intent term and we have affiliate links. So I could write about anything under the sun on a blog. I could write about how to tie a shoe, how to tie my shoes, how to bake a cake, but is anyone actually gonna buy stuff from that? So a lot of people talk about vanity metrics and I got this much traffic, but did you make any money? Right, so we have to rank for keywords that will make us money and you can make a ton more money with less visitors with affiliate marketing. So we don't need like 100,000 visitors to our blog to make money with affiliate marketing. We could have a few thousand and make good money. So let's talk about quickly about the uh, importance of topical authority when we discover like our affiliate marketing content planning to make money. So we need to realize we need dozens of articles, not just one. So the goal of a blog is like, how can I create maybe 100 articles within a year, two a week, especially in the age of AI and people publishing content pretty quickly, how can I create a few articles a week? And every sub niche is a little bit different. So you might not need 20 articles about red light therapy to rank for some of these things, but maybe you need 10. It depends how competitive it is. For example, if you're talking about, you know, VPNs, you might need 50 or 100 articles to start ranking based on the competition. Or if you're talking about paintball or something less, you know, competitive, you might just need two or three articles. So it really does depend, but topical authority is how Google views you as an expert on the topic based on how much content you created on that topic. So we can't just have one article in rank. So there's multiple subtopics and keyword phrases. So things like you'd need all of these, like best red light therapy for home, for acne, full body treatment devices, and then lots of info content, how to use them, the benefits of it, all of that kind of stuff. So let's look at a few examples of topical authority real quick to get, give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So this is a good example of having topical authority in the coffee niche, uh, niche, homegrounds.com.co, and they have a coffee beans guide. So this is the article on coffee beans, they have a pop-up here. But then we see like all kinds of other content around it, like best coffee subscription, coffee club reviews, different coffee regions, like Costa Rican coffee, Hawaiian coffee. I really like that kind. Espresso beans, coffee cold brews, best coffee for pour over. So one article, it's kind of like one chapter in a book, right? Because we need more content to become an expert. Like what if we want to read about different types of coffee and how we do it? And we, you know, we view this site as an expert because of all of this related content. So we can see light roast, medium roast, and dark roast. There's also something like Roasty Coffee, which has coffee facts. But just in their article on coffee facts, you see that there's tons of other internal links to other articles on the history, organic versus non-organic, how it's made, and everything else, recent articles, reviews. So really every blog is two types of articles, information and then reviews. So in this coffee one, you would have how to brew coffee, what's the best type of coffee, coffee regions, all of that informational content that might not be great for affiliate revenue. But then you have actual affiliate content. So what are the best coffee makers? What are the best espresso machines that are expensive? Those are the ones that are gonna make a lot of money. Things that are expensive products that people search for, but you need that surrounding topical authority if you're ever gonna stand a chance of ranking and making money with it. So those were some examples of topical authority. Let's actually use AI and ChatGPT to create a topical map for ourselves. So if I go to ChatGPT, I have GPT-4 propped up here, and I'm gonna put in, this prompt, you are an expert in SEO. I need you to create a topical map that includes a mix of keywords I can write, authoritative articles on, informational transaction on the topic of affordable gaming laptops. So I wanna become an expert in gaming laptops. What articles am I gonna write? So this is a really good response from ChatGPT. They gave me 30 article ideas and they actually made it by subtopic, including buying guides, all kinds of gaming laptop articles you could write transactionally under different price points, performance, informational content, different brands, features, user experience, and then deals and discounts. So there's a lot of ways that you can use ChatGPT to come up with these. Let's try one more. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna try it for standing desks. All right, so this is really good as well. It gives me a lot of ideas on all kinds of different informational keywords. So benefits, ergonomics, types, research, also transactional, best standing desk, reviews, accessories, DIY, converters, deals, warranties. So again, ChatGPT is a great way to cover your topical authority. Write all the articles that you need in order to make these you know, affiliate articles actually rank on Google and start making you a lot of money. Now you can use ChatGPT and AI for a lot of things. They can 
do your keyword research, write your topical maps, create outlines, write entire articles. Uh, they can do a lot and they can make you speed up your content creation as well. You could also use a tool like Content at Scale, which is linked below that does all the writing for you. you can write 2,000, 3,000 word articles formatted correctly. You just put a keyword in, hit a few buttons and it writes it in a few minutes for you. So there's really, we're at the beginning of the AI revolution and to make money blogging with a you know content driven business, we need to be able to use these tools, adapt, learn how to use them and try to speed up our content creation a little bit to make more money and compete. Now let's take a quick look at an example of multiple articles and what that means because more, more, more articles ranking is more traffic, more clicks, more conversions, more commissions. So let's say we were ranking in the top five positions for 10 different articles and various keywords we're ranking for. And of all of that, we got 20,000 clicks to these articles a month. Same math, 30% of people click an affiliate link for 6,000 affiliate link clicks, 2% purchase, now that's 120 purchases. If the average order value across the site is $500, you've generated $60,000 in revenue for these companies, and 10% of that is $6,000 in commissions. So it adds up over time, the more content that you rank, the more you create, the more diversified you get and the more, you know, the more content you create, the more money you can make. Now, a quick note on recurring affiliate commissions. So we we're talking about like a red light device is a physical product on Amazon, but some affiliate categories are also like recurring, like software. They buy something once every single month and they keep, you know, they need to keep paying every month to use the software. Well, there's recurring affiliate programs too, where you make a percentage of that monthly subscription every single month. And that's how I run my business. And that's why it's so diversified and so stable is because I make over $100,000 a month with affiliate marketing from posts that I ranked for years ago. And I still rank for a good amount of them. But it was, you know, building that slow recurring revenue stream up over time with multiple companies and all that. So that doesn't even take that into consideration. Just wanted to make a side note there. And if you're interested in learning more exactly how to run an affiliate marketing business, AI, content, link building, all of it, make sure to click the link below and sign up for my free masterclass. That's 80 minutes of free training. Just all you need to do is give your email, you can sign up for free. All right, let's talk about ad revenue. So ad revenue is probably the easiest. Some people would say it's phase one, it's the easiest. However, it's also not one of the best. It takes a lot of traffic to make money through ad revenue, but it is very passive. Now, ad revenue can vary. You can make anywhere from $2 to $40 RPM, which is revenue per 1,000 views. So you get 1,000 views on your banner ads, you get 1,000 visitors to that page. You can get anywhere from $2 to $40. $40 is really high, probably around, it's usually around like eight to 12 or $15, depending on the network you're in. And that's based on your niche. But let's get, let's assume that, you know, you make a $5 RPM. So that's 5,000 views per month would only be 25 bucks. So you need a lot of traffic to make a lot of money with ad revenue. So yes, big media sites like Forbes, they cover their site in ads, they blanket it with these site skins and they charge hundreds of thousands of dollars for it, but it's because they have millions and millions of visitors. So for us as individuals, ad revenue for me is phase two because affiliate marketing dictates the initial content strategy to make money. And we also wanna have posts that can make ad revenue, but we know it's gonna take a little bit of time, which is why it's phase two. So you need significant traffic to make money from this. Your niche will determine these RPM rates. And it's best to use these on pages that are informational in nature. So high traffic, not very high search intent for products. So this isn't gonna be, you're not gonna make a ton of affiliate, uh, ad revenue for something like best red light therapy, but you are gonna make them for broader terms, very broad stuff. So if you're in fitness, for example, you wouldn't make it on necessarily like the best protein powder for weight loss. But if you wrote something like, and you ranked for something like ab exercises or tricep exercises, something that is really you know low low product intent but very high search volume that's the stuff that makes money so that's why food blogs have so many ads on them because it's all about recipes right if you search for a recipe you're not going to buy something from an affiliate link ads go back to intent and we need both we need the lower volume higher earning potential affiliate posts the transactional best of posts and we also need high volume low intent posts for ad revenue. And that's what makes up a bulk of your traffic. So when we think about it, when we wanna break down the numbers, let's look at affiliate marketing versus ad revenue. So ad revenue again can vary. At a $5,000 RPM, 5,000 views is $25. But a single affiliate article in the same, you know, same amount of traffic, 30% click on affiliate links, 30 sales, you can make 10% commission, $750, which is a 30 times difference just based on the search intent and the keyword that you're actually ranking for. So. Traffic is not all equal. Traffic does not equal revenue. Ranking for high quality traffic equals more revenue. So you can see just one example of a post equal, you know, could be 30 times more money. 
with an affiliate strategy over ad revenue. Let's talk about double dipping. So combining multiple revenue streams, affiliate income plus sponsorships. So let's talk about monthly sponsorships. So Google real estate is really valuable. So ranking in the top 10 is valuable, not just to you, but if you're ranking for a product term that is a category, like best webinar software, best email marketing software, best camping tents, the brands in that space will want to work with you, right? So when you're ranking, it's really valuable. And companies are willing to pay money for ads, right? They're gonna, they're gonna pay, that's how Google makes a bulk of its money, is paying for ad spots and being in one of the top four ad positions. So if your blogs are organic underneath that, can you cut a deal with the company to get them cheaper traffic and more sales? So I have a few sponsorships I've done. I've done many over the years, but my very first one was for my article on podcast hosting. I was making a few hundred dollars a month with it, recurring, cheap, pretty cheap product, $10 a month, $5 a month. I was making a little bit of money. But a brand came to me because I was ranking in the top five and they said, we'll pay you $5,000 a month to be included in this article. So boom, I went from a couple hundred dollars a month to $60,000 a year just from one sponsorship deal. That was more money than I was making about four years ago in my career, which was pretty crazy. But sponsorship has a lot of potential. It's basically selling spots in these articles, kind of removing the affiliate process from it. But you can do both. A brand will pay you to be put number one in an article on a certain topic. And you could also even add an affiliate link in there. Sometimes they let you do that too. But let's do the math on this. So when we think about how much money should I charge for a spot in an article, if I'm ranking in the top 10, well, how much is the cost per click for that term? So also how many clicks are you getting to that article and how many purchases from that click? So for example, like best at home red light therapy, it's pretty cheap. It's like $1.40 a click, whereas some you know, best email marketing software, CRM software might be like $40 a click. Certain financial terms, credit card related stuff is really expensive. So it just depends on that. But if a brand is willing to pay that in Google ads, would they pay a little bit less and just be included as third party validation in your blog post? The answer is yes, because they're paying less for marketing and you're, you know, they're getting third party validation. So they're getting clicks at a lower cost. And as long as the conversion rates are good, they love it. So. For example, this is the affiliate article example, 5,000 views a month, uh, equaling a $750 total commission. But if we have a sponsorship here, we can see the same amount of clicks times that $1.40 for the red light therapy is $2,100 a month. Now you can ask for half of that and just say 1050, make them number one in that pick. And then you have your bulk of your other affiliate marketing and your other you know, uh, companies in that list. You can even keep the affiliate links in there. That's often recommended plus that sponsorship, so now you're making $1,800 a month. This really scales with higher traffic articles, uh, recurring commission articles, um, and things that you're ranking for really well. But you can combine these two. I have many articles that have affiliate links plus sponsorships. So you can do both of these on the same articles, again, on an article by article basis. Now let's talk about a quick note on triple dipping or having three revenue streams in one blog post. That could be affiliate links plus a sponsorship or two, plus ads. So there's no reason not to have ads in your affiliate articles. You can have, you can join a network like Mediavine or AdThrive or Ezoic, which I believe Ezoic has limited their, removed their uh, traffic threshold. So anyone can join as long as they have a high quality site. But you can have all three. So you could have, you know, a top 10 article with 10 different companies, 10 different, you know, uh, affiliate programs in there. Maybe a few are sponsorship deals where you're making a few thousand dollars a month. And then you also have ads in there. So there's no reason that you can't do all three. The only time I don't put ads on posts or I remove them, which you can do on a post by post basis in these ad networks, is if it's making a ton of money and ad revenue doesn't make sense. So some of the higher intent ones, like for example, CRM software or best online course platforms or something like that that makes me a lot of money. I'd rather not distract people with ads if I'm making over $10,000 a month from an article on affiliate marketing, I'd rather not you know, mess it up with a few hundred dollars from ads. So, however, it's really a testing game. This whole thing is a testing game. You test, you join affiliate programs, you see which ones convert, which ones don't. You see the traffic, you start collecting data, you see how much ad revenue it's making in the network, and then you combine these things to just maximize the revenue potential of each individual article. All right, now it's time for the next phase, the next step of monetization, and this includes leveraging your authority. This one takes a little bit more time. So we covered, you could run you know, an entire blog with just affiliate and ads and be done there. But if you wanna take things to the next level, if you wanna go from six figures to seven figures, you need to sell your own product. So this is really becoming a force, building a real brand around yourself, creating a product that you can actually control. And now this can be sold an infinite number of times. It can be sold for any amount of money. You just have to know that you have to provide a lot of value, at least 10 to 100 times the value of what you're giving. 
It has low overhead, so you just have to create content. Typically, this is a course or coaching program where you're either trading your time or video content that you're updating a lot. It's easy to manage and update, so it's not too difficult. And there's lots of different things you can do. You can do eBooks, courses, cohorts, communities, coaching programs, informational content. People, you know, there's a big uh, shift in education these days. People are paying $100,000 to go to college for general degrees. I did, I didn't learn a whole lot in college. I learned a lot more with hands-on experience, but people that have expertise in niche areas, like for me, it's blogging, making money online, YouTube, that kind of stuff. Could be you want, might wanna learn the guitar or photography or things that you're not really gonna learn from college necessarily as well. You pay experts for these courses and this is where information fits in. Now, if you're a blogger and you write about affiliate marketing and you have products and you have ads and you're making money and you're in a niche that you can teach, this is the next phase of your, you know, your personal brand basically. So this gives you more control over your own business. So Google's volatile. It can, you know, traffic can go up and down, which dictates how much ad revenue you make, how much affiliate income you're making, unless you're recurring, but you have more control over your own product. So there's different things you can do. You can do Kindle, eBooks. I don't really recommend that because just they're so cheap. You know, it's like, I don't want to make $7 every sale. I want to make a little bit more than that and provide real value and help people in their lives rather than just writing a book or something. But there's video courses, you know, simple video courses where it's just video. It could be five hours of video, 10 hours of video. It could be outdoors, it could be somebody talking in a studio setting like this. But the best to me is something that's a hybrid course plus community. So. We have examples here, like Ali Abdal has a YouTube Academy that just teaches how to get YouTube views. I also have Blog Growth Engine, which is my flagship blogging coaching program. And what's great about creating coaching programs is it's not just a course. It's not just, I'm gonna sit and make 10 hours of content. It's I'm gonna shoot 40 hours of video content. And then we hired four blogging coaches and we have a community, live Q and A's, unlimited coaching calls for people. So if they sign up, they can go through all the course content, they can join the community of 2000 people, they can ask their questions, they get them immediately answered by coaches, but they can also book a, a Calendly call with the coaches and actually get that one-on-one -on -one support. And that's where the world is going, especially with the world of information and selling your own products and services, because YouTube like this, I can teach a lot of stuff like this, but I can't teach a step-by-step -step formula over the course of 40 hours with coaching and support and build, you know, help you build your website and do everything in a YouTube video that doesn't make sense. But these types of hybrid coaching and, you know, communities is kind of the future of creating your own product and information. So how do you prepare? Like, you know, how did I get here? Well, it took me four years to get to this point. I didn't even have a YouTube channel about a year and a half ago. So how do we get here? How did I start? And what do you do if you just wanna start building this momentum to eventually sell a product? Like we're not ready. We don't have an audience yet. We don't have a product. What do we do? Well, we first build your email list. So when I first started my blog in 2019, I wasn't really collecting emails. And then I signed up for like MailChimp for free and I made mistakes. I had like a MailChimp sign up on the right hand sidebar. No one was signing up, no one cared. And then eventually I figured out that what actually works is exit intent pop-ups. So right now I use a tool called ConvertBox and basically they, you know, when you visit the blog and you're about to exit, you scroll up to the top, the pop-up appears. You can also do entrance intent. So just make the pop-up appear after a certain amount of seconds there on the site. But that gets the image and the, you know, the point across right in their face. They don't have to go find the email opt-in spot. This is how you get 99% of your email opt-ins from a blog is through these pop-ups. Now you create those pop-ups and you need something of value to give them. You need a lead magnet. When I first started, I created a, a blog launch checklist. It was like a seven day blog launch checklist. I hired somebody on Fiverr to create it for me. It was like 15 pages. It was free, it was valuable. I covered a lot of stuff, but it was really simple. I paid like a hundred bucks for the design and then I, you know, I edited it myself and that was the lead magnet. And that got me pretty far. So after that, you ha I had a welcome sequence. So they opt into your email list. And then even if you don't have a product, you can start warming them up, teaching them about you, teaching more stuff. You wanna be a trusted source before you even sell a product. So for about two years, two and a half years before I started selling my course, I was just sending free stuff, sending information. I sent a seven day email sequence of like, here's how to blog, do link building, content, all of that. That was before I was ever on video, something I was super uncomfortable with and never wanted to do, never thought of doing. So it was all through a blog. I had a welcome email sequence and that's how I got here. So it was between 2019 and 20, middle of 2021, I built in about two and a half years, I got to like 40,000 email subscribers. And that was just through my blog posts, exit intent, sending them free stuff and really doing nothing. Um, not having a product that is, not selling anything. So after that, I actually was primed, I was ready, I had a list and I wanted to create the best possible 
coaching program in the world. So we did beta testing with students. We went through a live course. I hired our course creators. You know, now my business partner, Colin, many of you know him. So it's a whole process. It takes time. We can't just create a $10 course, shoot a few videos, put it on, uh, you know, some site like Udemy or something. If you want to sell a course, you have to do it right. And it takes time. So that's why we start with a blog because you can outsource it. You don't have to work on everything yourself. You can scale it. You can build these revenue streams with affiliate marketing and ads first before you have a product. While you're doing that, you build your email list without selling anything. You're just building trust. And then when you're ready and you have critical mass and you have a product, and you have something you can teach. That's when you create your course, your video course, and then you can start selling it. So it's all, it takes time and through personal branding. All this stuff can take time, but that's the power of personal branding. Like your blog is the foundation. It's a website that people go to, but revenue diversification is here uh, is key here. So to build a stable, you know, make, to make money blogging for 10 years, not just six months, you need to have diversification. That's diversification in affiliate programs, articles that you're ranking for so that you're not reliant on just one post making all your money. You have to have diversification revenue streams. And then eventually what I had is also platform diversification. So I realized I'm like, Google can be volatile. I should have a YouTube channel because Alphabet owns both, but I can actually do a lot better teaching on YouTube. Like, yes, I wrote some articles about starting a blog and making money blogging on my own blog, but I can teach it like a thousand times better on video with actually slides, presentations. We have a team of 12 people now and these, you know, people help me create these videos. I can't do this on my own, but platform diversification is also eventually key, but that takes time. That's why I didn't start my YouTube channel right away. I started about two and a half, three years into the journey. So the thing is this stuff takes a little bit of time, but these are the phases and this is why we go through it in this order. And then we eventually want to sell this information through YouTube plus blogging. So this is what it can look like. So everything goes into one landing page, which to get people to opt into your email list from YouTube, from the you know YouTube descriptions, from blog X intent, from link in bio and social media, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. TikTok's not great with <laughs> letting you link to anything, but it goes to a single landing page. They opt in. You can have, send them then to an email sequence, maybe a training video or a you know, shorter you know, uh, version of a course, something that they really get value in. And then you go to a sales page and check out. And that's pretty much the whole process. So you want to get people into your you know, leads. You, know, you want a number of leads. We have over 100 and maybe 10,000 people in the email list now. But a lot, you know, a lot of it is just providing value. That's why I think ongoing coaching and support is a great product to sell rather than just a video course that's just video, that's it. That's why we have you know, uh, so much success is we actually have coaches, we have support and all of that. Now, the note here is your course or coaching program has to be great. You can't half ass it. This is if you have your own product, think of it like e-commerce, there has to be a product market fit. You have to be the best in your industry. You have to look at the competition, see what they're doing and then do things a lot better, not just like maybe 50% better, but 10 times better, five times better. How can you keep just stacking value so that the price is down here and the value just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing so that people would seem stupid if they didn't sign up for your program. And that's how you do it. You do it through coaches, you do it through a high quality product, ongoing support. We're moving into you know other things. We're gonna potentially have events, in-person stuff, all kinds of different things. But it all just starts you know, with a simple website, affiliate marketing and ads. Now, again, like I said, getting to this phase of all of this takes time. It's a multi-year process. We're not going to be able to create a website, write a bunch of content, create a course, go on YouTube. Like the personal branding stuff takes a lot of time, but you can do it. Now let's talk about an optional phase. And this is one that um, I really like and I started with. So we can put this at phase one if you want, or two or three or four. It fits in any one of them. And that is consulting. So people pay a lot of money for true expertise. So I kind of like consulting actually as phase one or four. Now with one, you can say, if you want to leave your job faster to build a true blogging business, you can start with consulting if you wanted to, because you get a couple of clients and then you can leave your job a lot faster. It's quicker revenue. Affiliate marketing takes maybe six months, three to six months to start making decent money with. It takes more time, but you can use your blog to sell stuff right away to people, your own services. So this could be hourly work or just things on a retainer. But you can make like 20 times what you could at a traditional nine to five. And this is how I actually started. You can charge hundreds per hour, thousands per agreement. So let's look at the math here of consulting. 
So let's say you're a former triathlon champion, record holder, and your product is remote triathlon coaching and preparation. So you meet with people on Zoom, you go over their game plan, you give them like the exact things that they need to do every day, bike this much, run this much, these are the shoes to wear, this is where you should go. It's pretty in depth and you could charge something like $1,500 a month for this for people that are really serious if you're an expert. Now, how many clients can you have per month? Probably maxed out at 20. You'd wanna meet with people, you'd wanna have regular meetings. But let's do the math, 20 clients times 1,500 a month is $30,000 a month, $360,000 a year from a website selling consulting services in that specific niche. Now, what if you're an SEO expert? This is kind of what I was. I had uh, some experience in my career, so I, uh, I offered content planning and link building for brands. And I was charging typically $5,000 per month per brand. Now, if you're, it depends on the niche. Like I was working with software companies who have a ton of money to spend. So $5,000 wasn't much to them. Some I started at 1,000, 2,000. I kind of sold myself short. I realized I could charge more 5,000, but it's really an agency model numbers game. And maybe the max clients you could have here is 10 times 5,000, $50,000 a month just from consulting. So if you want to like escalate your blog income way faster, create a website, start doing consulting services. You can do it inbound with a contact form. You can get a lot of information. Try to rank for those terms like content marketing consultant, triathlon coach, whatever those terms are, you can rank. And you can also have a big presence on like LinkedIn and other brands, depending on your niche. It could be a Twitter thing. It could be a Facebook thing, Instagram. It's about building, you know, and networking. And what's great about blogging is that it's constantly networking. It's, it's building links, building relationships, guest posting, meeting people, writing content, working with brands. And we teach hours of this strategy in our new module 11 of Blog Growth Engine. So we teach you know, how to price and proposals, how to sell without selling, how to sell through email, how to do all of that stuff. And that was a new, uh, a new module that we added in a recent update of Blog Growth Engine. We're actually working on Blog Growth Engine 4.0, which is gonna add tons and tons of hours of new content. Me, Colin, our coaches, a few surprise guests as well, but we just keep updating and iterating and creating the best uh, blogging community in the world. So the key to make money blogging to get from zero to $10,000 a month to $50,000 a month and more is multiple income streams. Having multiple ones, not just affiliate marketing, but ads, passively consulting, eventually a course, and you just keep stacking these things over time. The truth is you have to be your own advocate. No one is going to do this for you. This is the hardest part. Going from full-time employee with a part-time blog, getting discouraged, feeling imposter syndrome, like you're not good enough, like it's not gonna work out, not seeing revenue right away, and then you quit. So it's really up to you. It's like, do you hate writing? Well, then you can you know, assemble content in this way and write these affiliate articles easily. Do you have experience in your career with a hobby? Maybe you start with consulting to get out of your job faster. Or maybe you're better on video, you'd rather just go right to YouTube. So it really depends on your strategy, but you have to get started. You have to be your best own advocate. Now, if you're interested in learning more, getting a crash course on exactly what you need to do, affiliate marketing, uh, content, how to assemble it, how to write it, how to do link building, how to make money, how I make $400,000 a month now with my online business, make sure to click the link below and sign up for the free masterclass, 80 minutes of free training. Lots of students have gone through, lots of aha moments in there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was a little different than other make money blogging online videos. I hope it was a little bit more, gave you a little bit better picture of how everything works. Please like the video if you can, subscribe to my channel, check out other videos, and I will see you in the next video.